Hey everybody, it's Nick from Android Headlines. I'm wearing an HTC Vive and today we're going to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to get the best use out of this thing. So first thing that you're going to notice when you put on the headset is when you're holding your controllers, you're going to see that you have a right hand and a left hand. That's going to be shown on the actual controllers in the virtual world themselves. You have little left and right hand indicators on each controller, so make sure you're obviously you're holding those in the right hand because some games do rely on very specific hand placement for those controllers. Taking a look in the VR holding program, if you will, straight out of the Matrix playbook, that's what you're going to find here. You'll be able to see that you have a bounding box all around you. Now this is the particular advanced bounding box. This is a much smaller grid. If you press the small button below the trackpad, so you have your trackpads here on the unit, then below it you have an actual small little button. This is the system button. Now I have it enabled where you can see the camera on the front of the Vive's headset, and that's going to let you see the room around you in a little bit different way if you're getting stuck on something, and you're trying to figure out what the heck you're hitting, something like that. Now the system menu is going to be able to show you Steam, so this is your Steam big picture mode interface. Down here you're going to find your Steam, Desktop, and Vive apps. So obviously Steam is here. You click your desktop, that's actually going to pull up the full desktop. That's going to show both of my particular monitors. And then of course whatever setup you've got. And then if you click the Vive one down here, this is going to take you to the official HTC Vive interface. So you have your phone connection here, we can get our phone set up. You have your most recently used apps here. You have your A to Z up here. And then over here if you click on Vive Home, that'll actually take you to the Vive holding program if you will. And this is going to show you just a cool little area to look around in. You can see there's not really a whole lot here. It just looks really kind of overwhelming and cool. But from here, you'll be able to do a couple of other things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do from the Steam VR panel. So you can actually teleport around. If you point, you'll see the little reticule come up, and then you're going to want to click on the trackpad, and that'll let you sort of teleport around the world and see a little bit more what's going on in this space. You can actually change out the space by pressing the menu button, that's the one above the trackpad. That's gonna bring up the Vive interface. Now from here, this is just gonna show you your most used, most recent, latest download, a couple of tips and tricks. Then HTC is gonna be building widget support into here. So if you're familiar, of course, with Android home screens, you'll know exactly what a widget does and how it works. You'll be able to drag those around this layout, but of course, that's not built in quite yet. Down here, you're gonna be able to find the apps that you have installed. At this point, I pretty much have all games. You can click and drag with the trigger button here. So if you pull the trigger as you're pointing and drag, you'll be able to scroll through all your list of games. And this is a nice, smooth little panel. It looks really pretty, just a good interface in general. On the bottom here, you're gonna find spaces. Now, this is the actual room around us. This is gonna be Museo as a little museum. And here, I guess, makes a little more sense for the teleporting feature. So you give it a second to load up the next thing, and we'll go jump over here. Hey, look, here's this painting. We'll go jump over here. You can see this painting a little closer. Jump over to that one, see that one a little bit better. You get the gist. They probably do some more interesting things with these, but for now, there seem to be only two that you can do anything with. We'll go ahead and pop that panel up again by pressing the menu button. And up top here, you're gonna see the time as well as the configuration. Now, I'm gonna set the space to default, get a little bit of tips and tricks, change the teleportation mode so you can change it to blink if you want, and we'll see how this looks. It just blinks. It's a little bit quicker of a transition, or of course you could change it to dash. And this is going to actually look like it's zooming in towards it, which is definitely going to make some people sick. So if you're getting motion sickness, you may want to turn those kinds of teleportation modes off. For now, we're going to press the system button, bring up the Steam VR interface again. And on the main Steam VR interface, of course, we have this one that we went over earlier. On the bottom here, you're going to find again the time, the sound, and this is probably a particularly useful area down here. Now, the sound thing, I've had time to time where I turn on the headset, there's no sound at all, and I can't figure out why. All you got to do is toggle it off, toggle it on, and most of the time, that's going to re-enable your sound and put it back through the Vive's headset rather than through probably the speakers on your computer. You can also adjust the volume from anywhere in any game by pressing that system button, bringing up this menu, and dragging the slider one way or the other. Of course, dragging is done, again, by clicking and holding the trigger and then just doing your thing. If you ever want to exit whatever you're in, you can go and just click Exit Vive Home, and now, of course, it closes the thing around me, and I'm back in the Steam VR construct. In the bottom here, you're going to find Room View, which actually turns on the camera on the front of the Vive, and now I can see the entire room with a very transparent overlay of the Vive holding program in the back. Now, again, you're going to press System button to bring this back up, 
And at any time, if you want to enable this room view, no matter what app you're in, you can double click that system button and it will turn this camera on. Now this is a setting that may or may not be enabled by default, so we'll go ahead and check out where you can turn that on in case you do want to use this or you don't like it for some reason. Again, go ahead, press that system button, bring up the system menu, navigate yourself down here to settings, and then up here in the VR settings, you're gonna find general VR settings, chaperone, in headset and camera. You're gonna to wanna to go down to that camera section and by default, it's gonna have enable camera and dashboard and enable room view. If you don't like those, go ahead and turn that thing off. That enable camera and dashboard is actually this thing. So if we uncheck that, it's gonna turn that off. We can check it back again though, because this is actually really handy and it's nice to be able to see around you in a quick moment, anytime you need it. It's not there normally, press the system thing, comes right up. Now the other cool thing you can do is messing around with the chaperone balance. So we're gonna come right back to this camera settings you go to your chaperone balance here. It's set to advanced right now. By default, it starts as beginner. Now you'll note that beginner has a lot more grid lines. It tries to basically keep you in the balance. And then as you get more used to the virtual space, you can change it to intermediate, squares if you want a different type of design, or advanced if you just want a little bit of help here and there to remind you that you're about to run into a wall or some other object. If you go into developer mode, you can actually turn these off completely. If you do like this little rectangular area on the ground and you always want that to be there no matter what, you can go ahead and check floor bounds always on and that will leave them there permanently and not take them away. By default, chaperone bounds only turn on when you get close to a wall. So these are not going to be here all the time. They're only going to be here as you get close to a wall or an object. If you don't like this color, the, the default color is something like this. I've already changed it in my own setup. You can just drag this little bounds color anything you want and of course if you want it to be a little bit brighter you can make it brighter here if you want it to be dimmer just for a little bit better effect and to not be so obnoxious looking you can turn it down a little bit personally i prefer the white and turn it to gray because that's sort of less obtrusive than anything else go back you always just click the little back arrow in the top left just like you would on a normal mobile device so speaking of chaperone bounds the cool thing is, is you can actually use the camera and i'm not just talking about the one here but if you go into the camera settings here you can click use camera for chaperone bounds and now, as you'll see, normally the chaperone bounds don't show. But once you get close to a wall or something, they're going to show up. And instead of just being the grid or the boxes or whatever you've set it to, it's actually going to come up with a little neon looking camera view of the world around you. Now, this is particularly interesting when you have a room sort of like the one I'm in, where you have a desk over here with a monitor and a bunch of other junk. And this is going to get in the way for, you know, maybe smack it or something like that. So just in case you are in a room with a configuration like that or something, or let's say you have a couch or a chair or something that you actually want to sit in, do something cool with it or whatever, that actually works very well for being able to help you. Now, the other thing is if you want to just turn this off, you don't want to use this for the chaperone bounds, but let's say you're in a game or something and you need to see the world around you. Well, you can double tap that system button and it'll bring up the camera interface no matter where you're at. So like we have a yoga ball over here. I can actually sit on the yoga ball. <laughs> I can actually sit on the yoga ball with the Vive and I don't fall. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool to be able to do stuff like that. I'm assuming that some developers will probably use this for the games and interacting with the world around you and that sort of thing. If you ever want to turn it off, of course, you just double tap in the same way that you turned it on. Last but not least, we'll go over notifications. So by default, Steam will give you notifications if friends come online, if they send you friend requests, if a download completes, something like that. You can also get notifications from your phone too if you link it up with the Vive. So let's say you don't want those notifications for some reason, you're watching a movie in here, you're particularly engrossed with the game, pop open the settings menu again, go down here, go to general VR settings, and then click on do not disturb. And of course that works just like your phone. You'll get no notifications, you will not be bothered by anybody in the outside world, and you will enjoy your uninterrupted experience. If you notice that your image is particularly fuzzy on the Vive, you can go ahead and actually move this knob on the left here to adjust the spacing between the lenses. Since everybody's eyes are made a little bit differently, shaped a little bit differently, whatever, spacing is gonna vary widely depending on your particular eyes. So go ahead and adjust those, play around with them, see if it helps the image a little bit. It's not a whole lot you can do about the blurring in the corner of the lenses, but that's just the way the lenses are for now. Maybe in later generations of VR, we can get these sort of things sorted out. Last but not least, we're gonna go into some in-headset settings. So if you wanna change this construct, you can actually go to this in-headset part of the settings menu. You can change it to just a solid color if you want, make it darker, make it lighter, or you can go back to the default image. You can pick this image, it's a pretty cool image, or you can change it to more of a deserty feel, feel like you're in the middle of a desert, you got another kind of background here. And then of course, you can also click on Browse Workshop to 
look at the Steam Workshop, see what other users have uploaded, or just put your own picture on here by opening a folder on your desktop. That's gonna be it for today's tips and tricks video. Stay tuned for more HTC Vive content, and be sure to check out everything we've got on the site. Check us out on Google+, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you're at, we're at. Thanks for watching. Till next time.